Hey everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to my channel where I usually talk about IT, cybersecurity, education, and career things. In today's video, I'm just going to talk about how I passed my software engineering technical phone screen at Google as a 37 year old. This video will be broken down into three parts. The first part being what I did to prepare. There'll be like a little bit of controversial stuff in there, probably. Uh, the second part, I'm going to cover like what actually happened during the phone screen, like during the interview, like the details of that. And then the third part of the video, I'm just going to cover if I could do everything over again, what I would do differently and maybe some advice at the end. So no matter if you're in high school and you're thinking about going into comp sci or you're already in a comp sci program and you're kind of preparing to get out or you're doing something totally different like you're nursing and you're thinking about making a huge career shift into coding, this video will probably be useful and at least give you something to think about. This one took a while, so if you don't mind, please consider liking and subscribing. I really appreciate it a lot. One thing I really want to nail home in this video and kind of ingrain into your brain that working at Manga or Fang or however you want to say that, that. That's not something that's luck based, to be honest. There's there's luck involved with everything, just like there's luck involved with going to the supermarket and not getting hit with a car. But I, I would put like, you know, working at Fang and these companies in the same kind of realm as getting any other corporate job, to be honest. That is contrasted with like doing something like becoming an astronaut or like the next Taylor Swift. You can be like overly qualified and but there's still like the, a large luck component there where no matter how good you are, it's possible it will never, never work out. You know, working at Google, working at Amazon or, or Microsoft or any of those manga companies, that is like not, I wouldn't put that in like the luck realm. I put it in like I don't even put it in like the you have to be like super smart realm. You just have to understand like what the requirements are holistically, not just coding. And then you have to get really good at coding first and foremost in a methodical way, dry algorithms, readable code, all that, and then do all the other kind of soft skills that are required. It's totally feasible. If you're like a high schooler or something, you have no idea how to code. It's well within your reach, right? I'm like almost 40 years old, right? It doesn't matter. All it takes is time, effort, and having interest in it helps too. So getting right into it, in a little bit of background. Traditionally, I work in IT operations and cybersecurity quite a bit. I decided I would get my comp sci degree and then try to go work as a software engineer. I have other videos about this, but I ended up getting a comp sci degree from WGU. It cost me $3,500 and it took two months from the time I enrolled to the time I finished with my comp sci degree. That sounds really crazy and it kind of is, but there was a lot of prep that went into it. Go ahead and check out this video if you're interested in that at all, or if you just want to get an inexpensive computer science degree. So just bear that in mind. And Google Google's not the only place I interviewed at. I interviewed at Tenable, which is a security firm. I ended up getting a verbal offer from them as a software engineer. Um, I interviewed at Amazon. I did like a phone screen at Amazon, which consisted of a code review. And then I did the full loop at Amazon, which consisted of two coding questions. I was able to do both of those pretty, pretty well. And then of course I interviewed at Google as well. Uh, I just did the technical phone screen portion at Google, which was one coding question, which I'll get into depth later. And if you're wondering, like, I don't work at Google, I work at Microsoft. I ended up accepting a position at Microsoft actually like as a vendor as you can tell by this orange badge and so and I got really busy because like YouTube and like everything else so I just kind of stopped the Google process. I'm really interested in working at Google in the future for what it's worth and it's really appealing to me but there are certain reasons why I ended up going with this job but that's for another video so that's just a little bit of background. So getting right into part one of this video what I did to actually study and prepare for my technical phone screen. I used two tools to study my data structures and algorithms for my interview prep. The first tool is Anki, which is a spaced repetition software. It's like a really smart flashcard system that shows you flashcards in a smart order in the sense that like it shows you things that are more difficult for you more often and the things that are easier for you, you see them less often. I'll kind of give a demo of that in a second. And then the other tool that I used, uh, I'm not sponsored by them, by the way, I tried to be but I'm not, is Algo Expert. And if you don't know what Algo Expert is, it's really similar to Leak Code, which is basically like a large repository of coding questions. The only difference between like Algo Expert and Leak Code is Algo Expert kind of grabbed the best questions from Leak Code and kind of packaged them up nicely. And they really have a nice standardized delivery mechanism to like teach you all the different algorithms and patterns and stuff. It's quite nice. They have video explanations for everyone, which is kind of key to like what I'm about to talk about. The coding samples, they're all like really standardized 
place all put together in one nice place where you can kind of save some time. And I'm all about that. And that's why I ended up using Algo Expert. Getting right into like how I use these two things to essentially get, I, would, I won't say like really good at programming, but like much better at programming than I was. I'll just get into it and give you like a quick demo. This is where kind of things get a little bit controversial, but anyway, I'll, I'll just kind of show you what I did. So I'll just pretend like I'm opening Algo Expert for the very first time. And I'll show you like exactly what I did to kind of study and ingrain these things into my head. And then I will kind of explain my theory behind that. So pretty much when you go to Algo Expert, um, I'll, I'll talk about how far I got in this toward the end, but you open up Algo Expert and you can kind of group them in different ways by difficulty, by category, etc. So we'll just group by difficulty here. And then you can see, you know, the easy coding questions, medium, hard, etc. So basically like what I would do is I'll just pretend like I'm doing this for the first time. I'll just open the first problem here, two number sum. And if it's the first time for me seeing a problem, I will open up Anki and then say I have like a deck, it's like a flash card deck. Um, I, have an, I have an Algo Expert deck. So I would open this and then I would add a card to it, right? So I would say add and I would just take the URL, for example, um, I would just pay I would just say like two number sum and then I would just like paste the URL and I'll just add the card like this. I won't put it back to it. I'll kind of explain this in a little bit. So I add it to the deck and then I come back to the problem. I read the problem and this is kind of where it gets controversial. I'll just read the prompt, look at the input and outputs, and then I will like think about it for a while and then I will try to solve it. But if I can't solve it in like the first five or 10 minutes, I won't spend like over 10 minutes trying to solve something. For me, this is kind of a waste of time and I'll get into that a little bit later. There's a lot of controversy about this about how you need to like come to the conclusion like on your own and, and stuff. And I, I suppose that's one way to deal with it, but I, I honestly don't think that's the best way. So I'll explain like what I did and then why I did it later. So assuming that I cannot solve it after like five minutes, max 10, th at that point, I will they have a nice standardized way of explaining the algorithms and design patterns. So I'll try to watch this. Sometimes it gets to like 50% and I'm like, okay, I can solve it. But sometimes I can't. So I'll just like watch the whole thing through. And then after I watch, it, I will kind of like go back to the prompt and I'll try to solve it again. If I still can't solve it after like five minutes, then I will go to the solution and I'll actually look at the solution that they coded up and I'll look at this. I'll be cognizant of what is here. I won't just like blindly type it. So I'll look at this and then I'll type it here. I'll try to understand what I'm typing. And as soon as my copied implementation runs successfully, I'll kind of close everything out and go back to the prompt. And then I'll try to solve it again without looking at anything. And I'll just keep doing this over and over again until, until I I can solve it, say. So for example, I try to code it up again and I failed to do it again. I will go back to their solution. I'll look at the solution. I'll type it up. It runs. I will close their solution and I'll try to implement it again on my own. Obviously, you're going to accidentally memorize some syntax and like some code along the way. But more, more importantly than that, if you're cognizant and you're aware of like what you're typing and you try to understand that the more times you implement some problem or some solution to a problem or a design pattern, like something magic will happen in your brain and you will definitely like get a better intuition for what you're doing. And rather than like spending like two, three, four, five hours trying to solve something, if you understand the problem, you know, in the first 10 minutes from looking at the solution and then you blindly implement it, you know, many times over the same time period, you're going to come out better in the end, in my opinion. So basically that's what I'll do. So I'll just kind of simulate the first three of these really fast. So say I, I was able to implement this one correctly and I'm like, okay, good. Uh, two number sum, added it to my Anki deck, and I was at least able to implement it once, right? So I'll be like, okay, I'll go back and I still have energy. So I'll just go to the next one. So validate subsequence, same thing. I'll take this URL. I'll go to Anki. I'll make an entry for it. I'll add it. I'll read the prompt. I'll look at the sample input and output. I'll try to implement it. Say I can't do it after five or 10 minutes. Okay. I'll go to the video explanation. I'll watch Clem explain it. I'll watch the whole video. I'll close everything out and go back to the prompt. I'll try to implement it again. I fail. I go to the solution. I look at their solution. I think about what's there and then I code it out. I kind of copy it, but I think about like what I'm doing. I wipe out my solution. I'll close theirs and I'll try to implement it. And I'll just keep going back and forth like this until I can implement it blindly. I'm like, okay, I have enough energy for one more problem for the day, say. So so we get sorted squared array, same thing, prompt, input, output, try to implement it. I fail, video explanation, watch everything. I think I understand, go back to prompt, implement it, fail again, look at the solution, try to understand it. I copy the solution. Okay, I wipe out mine, go back to the prompt, try to implement it blindly and keep doing this until I can. And then say I finished for the day. Um, so, oh, 
forgot to add this one. So I add this to my deck. And then let's just say I finished for the day. So I go to sleep, right? I wake up tomorrow, make the espresso. I come back to my computer and then before I add any new problems from Algo Expert, I did up to sorted squared array yesterday, right? So before I start adding new ones, I will go to Anki, right? And I, I added three cards to Anki yesterday, right? So I will go to Anki and I will try to blindly solve these and I won't add any more cards until I'm able to blindly solve these. So what that would look like, I go, I go to Anki, here's my deck. Algo expert and I say study now and then I'm presented with the first card so essentially I take this URL paste it and then I'm like okay the, pro the problems here I have the prompt again like yesterday and I try to blindly solve this right so say say I was able to solve it the first time without looking at their implementation I'll click show answer and then depending on like how well I did I will click one of these buttons right so if I failed I will click again and that means I'll see this card again in less than a minute uh, if it was hard right then I'll see it in less than six minutes and this is 10 minutes and if I could just like bang it out immediately it was like easy right I'll click easy and I won't see this card again for another four days so we'll pretend this one is easy I'll say easy and then it presents me with the next problem I copy the URL go to this try to implement it say I try to type it up and I I almost could but I in the end I just fail right so I'll go back to here I'll say show answer and then I just say again because I I failed this one so instead of seeing this four days later I'll see it again in one minute um same thing with this one say I copied this I went to it and I I just I actually could implement it but it was like a little bit hard I'll say like six minutes right and then it goes back to the the previous one that I failed and then Anki won't let me finish my cards for the day until I'm able to like implement all of them right validate subsequence say I copied this I went to it and then I was able to do it it wasn't too hard wasn't too easy so I say good and then puts me back to the other one this is the one that it, that was like hard for me so say I implemented this one and then I was able to do it so I say good and then it shows me the other one and then I'm able to implement it at pretty average speed so I say good and then same thing with this one I say good and then that was three problems but I had to do them like many times in order for Anki to kind of like check them off for the day if that makes sense and then say at this point I I have enough energy to learn one more problem for the day. So I go tournament winner, same thing. I hated doing this problem, by the way, because the, the prompt is like so long for this one. So I'll add a new card, for example, tournament winner. And same thing, say, say I'm able to actually implement it the very first time without even looking at the prompt. So I'll say good. And then Anki, because it's less than 10 minutes and there's only one card left, Anki makes me do it again. So I'll implement it again. Even though it's easy, implementing it again will kind of give me something in my brain, right? Some magical thing will happen. And I'll say, good, and that's it. And then we'll, we'll be done for the day. So I'll kind of show you what my actual Algo Expert deck looks like, right? Like right now. I haven't looked at it for a while, but um, I'll just pretend like I'm about to study algorithms. So I'll open it, go Algo Expert, study now, minimum waiting time. I remember this one being like really my brain, like, I don't know. Anyway, minimum waiting time. Say that I look at it. Just say that I could implement it, implement it well. So I'll go to Anki. I'll say show answer. And you can kind of see how much the interval is spaced out. Like the more times you get something correct, these numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger. As you learn some pattern or some you learn how to do something, Anki kind of shows it to you less. So it kind of like makes room to show you more difficult things in closer intervals, if that makes sense. So basically my approach for this, instead of doing like, you know, I did 300 lead code questions. I did maybe 50 to 60 lead code questions, only 50 to 60, I guess, algo expert questions. So I only did like maybe 60 questions max, but I did them like a lot of times each, like 20 plus times, some of them. And I make sure to do them, I can do them off the top of my head. And again, like I, I, I want to get into why I think this works. I'm going to give a really simple analogy. So let's forget about Google and forget about like tech and all of that for a second. And let's just imagine that you're trying to get a job at the most prestigious bakery in San Francisco, for example. So every day for two months, you cook a double decker round chocolate cake. Every day, double decker round chocolate cake. And you make like 60 or 70 of these cakes. And then after two months, you show up at your interview at the prestigious bakery and they're like, okay, we want you to make us a triple decker square vanilla cake and then for you you're like man I've never made a square cake I've never made a triple decker cake I've never made a vanilla cake or even touched vanilla frosting in my life but because you've baked so many double decker round chocolate cakes it's not really difficult for you to make that conceptual leap and perform well and actually make the triple decker square vanilla cake that's exactly how coding interviews work except for the you know there's a few more design patterns in your coding instead of making cake but it's the exact same thing 
And for me, this, this is why I was able to pass most of my interviews, to be honest. Obviously the Google phone screen, because that's kind of what I'm talking about in this video. But most of the time I was presented with something that I had never seen before. But because I did these like this small, small set of problems, like so many times I have like really good intuition on how to make the conceptual leap to kind of do what's being asked of me, if that makes sense. I want to talk about how far I got with these and kind of show how many times I did, it did each problem and talk about this a little bit, but I'll kind of save that for the end. For now, I'm just going to hop right into the second part of this video and talk about what happened during the actual interview. So basically, I, I was emailed with a phone number to call for the interview, as well as a link to click, um, which would be our interview kind of white space. It was just basically a, a Google Doc, as you might have heard. So I, I was in my car and I had my noise canceling headset and I had my laptop and everything. And um, I just called the number and a lady answered who was my interviewer and then we just chatted for like a little bit and then she was like okay can you open up the doc and I was like all right and then it was like a very I guess raw and organic experience in the sense that like she didn't paste like a nice prompt for me to read she like explained the problem with her voice and I was like and as she was explaining it I was like oh my god I cannot solve this but I was like trying to like listen to her like the best I could and then ask clarifying questions and then um after like a minute of explaining she finally started writing down what the problem was and I was like I was like oh my god thank you for like doing that at that point I was like I don't know what's going on and I cannot solve this so I I asked her I was like do you mind can I take like two minutes just to like kind of read this through myself and try to gain a better understanding for what's going on she was like yeah that's fine I was like okay thanks so I just took my time and I tried to like calm myself down and like read the prompt and the more I, I read it I kind of understood I was like okay I understand what's going on here but she didn't she wrote it in an imperfect way I think it was on purpose where it was like a little bit ambiguous so I was like I was like what do you mean by this do you mean like one three five or do you mean like one three five seven nine all the way up to n these kind of questions she, and she was like yeah it's a little bit unclear let me fix it for you so she kind of fixed the prompt and then I was like okay at least I understand what's being asked and I was like okay I think I can do this but what she wrote down it was actually like a, a dynamic programming problem and I, I had just started learning dynamic programming and I, I definitely didn't have an intuition for it and I I recognized immediately like there's no way I'm gonna get the optimal solution for this in 45 minutes or like you know 37 minutes or whatever however much time is left it's just not gonna happen so I I told her I was like I was like I'm reading this and I know there's a more elegant solution for it but I, I don't think I'll be able to reach that in the time period like do you mind if I just attempt to brute force this and she was like yeah, yeah that's fine there's no requirement for time complexity I was like okay thank you so before I started coding I just by the way like everything I'm telling you now I learned from Clem from his Google interview advice his channel doesn't need shilling but he has great advice so just like you know check out his channel but anyway before I actually started coding I was like I'm gonna just explain everything to you to make sure I understand and then I'm going to jump right into coding if that's okay and then she's like all right so I just explained everything out and then I was like how does that sound to you does that sound like it makes sense and she was like yeah that sounds good now it's like okay cool do you mind if I start coding and then she was like okay so I just started coding it um, I tried to write out my functions first and kind of you know implement dry like don't repeat yourself and I tried to make the most long variables and function names that made the absolute most sense um, I was coding in Python so the syntax is like already easy so I tried to make it like look like you were reading English right I tried to make it look really good in that regard but if you don't know this already like once if you don't practice like once you get into an actual coding interview your IQ drops by like half <laughs> for, for me anyway it was really hard like organizing all this stuff in my head but I was kind of talking to her as I went and I was making like stupid mistakes here and there and she would catch them but she wouldn't like blatantly point them out she would say oh what did you mean by here or like is there a better way to do this or that and then she'd give me enough hints as to where I would notice the mistake I made maybe it was like an indentation error because of Python or like I put something unnecessary she would mention it and then I would thank God I like understood everything she was saying um, in terms of like where the error was because I, I found it and then I kind of reiterated why it was an error and I was like all right let me fix it and then after I fixed it I was like does this look okay now and she was like yeah so anyway the point I'm trying to make is a lot of acknowledgement of what the interviewer was saying and then in the end I got all the code written up of course it was way imperfect right because I was using a I was using notepad essentially or you know Google Doc but in the end I explained like time complexity and everything of all the functions I, ma I made one mistake in like the time complexity of like the overall program because I was calculating it in my head and I was like I was like man this looks like it's like a it looks like a time complexity of n cubed I'm like that can't be right that's like horrible so I was like the overall program
program time complexity of n squared. But actually she was like, oh no, it's n cubed. And I was like, oh my God. So that was like a whole thing. I don't know, don't, don't second guess yourself, I guess. It, it went okay um, anyway. And I felt like pretty good. I wasn't sure if I passed or not because it was like a really imperfect experience. My communication was really good, but my I didn't do dynamic programming really at all before then. I just brute forced it, right? I made an error in the time complexity and some other stuff, but it was a great experience. The interviewer was very nice. It was just a good experience. And I, I was like, thank you so much. Um, I, I complimented her because she, she was really good at like catching my errors. I was like legit impressed by that. But anyway, I was like, thanks, uh, good experience. And then see you later. And then we just like ended the call. Uh, I was like, I had no idea if I passed right but uh, about a week went by and the recruiter called me and she's like so what did you think of the interview and like you know when they when they call and they say this it means you passed otherwise they're not going to call and they're not going to say stuff like this they're just going to be like sorry and like an email but anyway she said we she just we just went over it and like the parts I did well and the parts I messed up and then she's like okay you passed and you're going on to the next part but um, at this point I kind of like already decided to start working at Microsoft there's a, there's a reason why I did this again I'm gonna save that for another video but that's pretty much what happened in the interview the kind of point I want to make about this is you don't have to have like perfect timer and space complexity you don't have to have perfect anything really you're graded on like a lot of different points right if you have like perfect technical aspect but your communication's bad you might get like a strong no or a no right it's totally possible so just you know focus on more areas than just algorithms but algorithms you know that's the hardest hardest area to get good at if you're good at that it's not that hard to like boost your communication your like coding cleanliness and all of that stuff so yeah that's what happened during the interview getting into what I could do if I did everything over again. Like the whole thing with this interview is it kind of got sprung on me before I was ready. As I was studying algorithms, I had in my mind that I wanted to interview at Google at some point. One of my viewers actually offered to refer me to Google and I don't want to be like, no, let me wait. And because I was like, yeah, sure. I was like, yeah. So I made my package and I, I didn't think it would like come that fast. And it, it didn't really come that fast. I had some time to study, but like wasn't enough. Eventually I got an interview and it just like sprung on me like too quick. And I, I was not ready for it, right? So the only thing that I could, that I would do over about my study habits is give myself more time or, or spend more time. But I remember in one of Clem's videos, he's like, don't wait, just like do it fast. Just like apply as soon as you can interview, you know, take your time if you need to study for your interview. But like do everything like as fast as you can. So I try to like take that advice. Actually, it ended up working pretty well, um, although I was quite uncomfortable with it. So I wanna kind of get into how far I got in Algo Expert and everything. So let me just do that real quick. So this, this Algo Expert, organized by difficulty. So basically um, I was able to do all of the easy problems multiple times and I was able to do about half. This will kind of give you an idea of like how good this platform is and like maybe an ability to gauge my study habits with just looking at the solution quickly and then implementing it like tens and tens of times, right? So um, bear in mind, like I was able to pass my Amazon full screen in the coding portions of the Amazon interviews, get an offer attainable and then past my Google phone screen with this thing you're kind of looking at right here with my study method. Okay, to give yourself some kind of idea, right? So about half of the medium questions, I've done these so many times, some of them like over, over 20 times, right? So you can kind of get an idea of how far my knowledge went, right? Just kind of look through these a little bit. And then I only did five hards and the way I, I chose what hards to do, I needed a sorting algorithm that's better than an average of n squared time complexity. So that's why I, I learned uh, quick sort, which is a hard. Um, I learned shifted binary search because it was in blind 75, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, I learned reverse a linked list because it's kind of a meme question that people get asked a lot. Um, I learned Dijkstra's algorithm because I needed a pathfinding algorithm that didn't suck essentially. Um, I learned this water area one because I think I believe this is dynamic programming. I think if it's not, um, I learned this because it was it's like a popular blind 75 problem. And that's pretty much all I learned in the hards. And I, I ain't even touch a single very hard, right? So if I group by category, I look at dynamic programming. I, I only did two dynamic programming problems. And I only did these like a couple times too. I just got into them and then like boom, like right in the Google interview, dynamic pro programming like right away. Um, but the thing I want to like kind of emphasize is because I like nailed into my head all these different patterns using like arrays and all this other stuff and I was pretty comfortable with the language and comfortable with all these other patterns. It, at the very least I'd never seen the problem I was given which I don't even think it's in here. I was able to at least brute force it and that's kind of the benefit 
in my opinion of my method. You gain so much intuition for all these like different patterns. It's not that difficult to solve something that you haven't seen before. Again, this is group by category. This is how far I got in my studies before I, I did all these interviews. So all these array problems, I did all of the mediums. I didn't do any of the hard or very hard array problems. Binary search trees, I tried to do these as, as much as I could. Binary trees, you can just kind of look at this. DP, didn't do any of it. Famous algorithms, I only did Dijkstra's. I tried to do as many graphs as I could. I couldn't I couldn't get all of these because like my interviews like came up too fast and I didn't have time. Greedy algorithms, heaps. I, I drilled this min heap construction like into my head. I don't know how many times I did it, but it was a lot. Linked list recursion, you gotta know recursion like pretty well. You can just kind of look at these if you want. I, I really enjoyed doing quick sort tries. I think that's how to pronounce that. Strings, stacks. This was fun. Uh, stack construction is pretty fun. But yeah, so adding on to like what I would do if I could do everything over again, let me go back into here. Basically what I would do if I could kind of make like the perfect combination of study package, I would I would have added all of easy to Anki. I would have added all of medium to Anki. I would have added, as far as like algo expert goes, I would have kept the, the same hards that I added into my deck and kept those. And then from there, I would have gone to blind 75, which is basically another curated list of programming questions that like the manga or fan companies like to answer. And I would have kind of merged and folded those into my algo expert problems, into my Anki deck. There's a lot of overlap between algo expert and blind 75, but I would have merged all of the blind 75 problems in. And then I would have kept that Anki deck and not added anything to it at all. And I would have drilled those that problem set for probably like two months until it was like so well ingrained into my brain that I could do like a blind implementation of like every single one of the problems without looking at the solution. Again, of course, you're going to accidentally memorize some source code and some syntax. But more importantly than that, like something magical like definitely happens in here and you gain like a really good intuition for like a lot of different design patterns and problems that way. The interviewers are going to have a hard time throwing something at you that you're not at least familiar with implementing this ideal plan that I that I have for myself that I wasn't quite able to reach. Even my Amazon interview, the first question I got is like freaking easy, so I won't talk about it. But the second one, um, the second one I had to decode a binary string. Like granted this like kind of easy, but I had never seen the problem before. But right when I looked at it and I read the prompt and I looked at the sample IO, I was like, I was like, this is so easy. I didn't even have to spend time thinking about it. I just was like, oh, okay, I'll just, do you mind if I explain it to you and then code it after that? And he's like, yeah, and it was, it was quite easy. And it was easy because I had done like so many kind of similar problems before and I had like built such an intuition around it. It was so, it's like so incredible. And I feel like it's kind of, it's so, sounds probably dumb if you don't know what I'm talking about, but it's like kind of magical in the sense you're like, wow, why do I know how to do this? Like that kind of feeling. If you do the same thing like over and over and over again. And there's only so many patterns right that interviewers are going to throw you so if you practice those patterns instead of doing like a thousand different lead code problems if you just do the same problem like 50 times in like a set of like you know 75 problems or something like this you're going to be in like really good shape if you can bang them out off the top of your head so one more thing i want to show really quick here this is my um these are the stats for my algo expert study within anki this is anki so you can kind of like see you know, these are randomly like the days that i studied and this is my answers for those days. So like green, green essentially means I'm learning it. Dark green means I've seen it so many times it's getting ingrained in your head. Red means you failed it hard. And then I believe orange, I think maybe it's like hard, not a fail or something like this. But anyway, um, this was like over the course of this is about probably a little over two months, maybe like two and a half or three months or something. Um, it says a total of 582 reviews. So bear in mind, the total number of problems I was able to complete in Algo Expert is only 58. And realistically, this should probably, I probably like for every card the Anki showed me, I probably implemented it on an average of two times. So this should probably be something like, you know, 1,060 reviews over the course of three months or something like this. So we'll say like, you know, maybe this is 1,060 divided by 58 questions. So for example, 1,060 divided by 58 questions. So maybe I did on average, I did each algo expert question, maybe like uh, about 18 times. So close to 20 times per question, something like this, just to kind of give you an idea of my study method and like what I did. So I didn't do like, you know, a 
a bunch of different problems. I did less than 60, right? And it's enough to pass like all those software engineering interviews and my Google uh, phone screen. I, I think if I decided to go through with the full loop at Google, um, I, I don't think I would be able to pass with this. Uh, maybe I would if, if I got lucky, if they gave me, I got lucky and they gave me easy questions. To pass the actual loop at Google, I, I probably would have drilled Dijkstra's algorithm a little bit more and I would have really like drilled dynamic programming like into my head like hard. But again, like talking about the previous plan that I had to finish, you know, all the mediums in Algo Expert and then fold blind 75 in and drill that for two months, I, I'm pretty confident I would have, I would be able to like work prob probably any entry level software engineering job in like the FANG realm, you know, even including like two Sigma, which I heard is hard. Um, I'm pretty sure I'd be able to get almost any job um, at that point because I was able to get pretty far when I wasn't even prepared. And I'm not saying I'm like smart or something because I'm definitely like really really, really average. My, my kind of a superpower and talent is being able to like take something and like really concentrate and like do something long term and, you know, kind of brute force my way through things. That's like what I'm good at. I'm not really good at programming or math or like any of that other stuff. So yeah, just bear that in mind. I want to say thank you so much to my patrons. I really appreciate you supporting me and the channel. I'm going to have a helper pretty soon who I have to pay. So thank you so much for supporting me. It makes things like that possible and much easier for me. Um, I do have an Instagram where I tend to post Post on more. So if you want to see like, you know, not necessarily tech things, but just my day to day life, like what I'm eating, you can check out that Instagram. Yeah. Also follow me on LinkedIn, connect with me. But yeah, other than that, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. <music>